Hey everyone, I'm Laura. And I'm Debbie. And we are back with I, I Got, Got the, the Hell, Hell Out. Out. And we just wanted to say, we wanted to give a warning about the language because it is kind of explicit at times. So we just wanted to give that warning. Um, so Debbie, what is up with the Kool-Aid we're drinking today? Oh, good, 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 Laura. Um, we have a contest every time we do a recording. Uh, today's winner is from Instagram, and that would be TMAT Podcast. We are drinking what is he called a sangria. It's one bottle of a red wine of your choice. You take a package of lemon and orange Kool-Aid. Do not add water. Um, you put that with about a cup of sugar into the, uh, the red wine. Chop up some apples, oranges, and pears, and you mix it all up. It was a little strong for our taste, so we added a little bit of 7-Up. And that's two different variations. And we thank you, T-Matt, for the wonderful, wonderful recipe. Cool. All right. Thank you, T-Matt. T-Matt? T-Matt Podcast. Mass. All right. Okay. Now, before we get started, we wanted to go into exactly what is a cult, what defines a cult. And the reason we're doing this is because my daughter, who is 17, we were talking about whenever Debbie and I were starting to talk about doing the podcast. She was like, Mom, I don't even know what a cult is. So she was at lunch one day, and I texted her at school, and I said, ask all of your friends right now, when you, they hear the word cult, what's the first thing that comes to mind? The only two things that they texted back were Kool-Aid and religion. That was it. They knew nothing else about cult. Cults are very in-depth. And what's funny is, is when I first went there, one of the first pamphlets that they give you is... What is a cult? Exactly. And we... I'm sorry, but that's just funny as shit. We will post a picture of this pamphlet. It literally says... What, what is, is a cult? Yes, and it describes to the cult members what a cult is but exactly we weren't ex we weren't a cult though you know well, that. excuse me i know that i know but i'm sorry debbie i am not going to go with that description i'm going <laughs> to go with an actual psychologist psychiatrist <gasps> definition if you don't mind oh we're going for actual like looking up information yes oh we're yes. not going off of what we hear from other people no okay no. we are going with a psychiatrist whose name is robert j lifton and he said that cults can be identified by three main characteristics. The first one is, and tell me if this sounds familiar, a charismatic leader who increasingly becomes an object of worship as the general principles that may have originally sustained the group lose their power. Oh, yes. Uh, the Grand Poobah and this group, he, he loved the power, and that's where his downfall was, as far as I'm concerned. When it was all about peace, love, and getting your shit together... It was a happy place. People enjoyed being there. And by the end, he ruled with greed and power. Uh, he had been overheard saying, you know, what can I make these people do next? So he was the object of worship, basically, like they're saying. People... Yes. Okay, they worshipped him. Okay, how about the second part? A process called coercive persuasion or thought reform. Yeah, they they tell you what to think, how to think. They make you think you're thinking for yourself. But you're not really. No, because when you go off and do your own research, then you go back to them and say, well, I looked some stuff up and this just doesn't jive. Well, then they would pull out the scripture about standing on your own understanding and knowledge, and you can't do that. Oh, we wouldn't want that. No, because it conflicts. Gotcha. Now, how about the third one? Tell me if this sounds familiar. Economic, sexual, or other exploitation of group members by the leader and the ruling powers that be. Oh, yes. Everything is controlled. They want your money. They sell you just about everything you can think of. Um, they make you buy the properties when you move there from another state. They tell you when you can and cannot have sex, when you can sleep with your husband. Like, actually, just go to bed. They're, they they tell you that certain times you can't just even go to bed in the same bed with him because you're making him unclean. Oh, and it's all about making him unclean. Because yes. we don't want that. They don't give a shit if you're unclean. Um, well, they give a shit if you're unclean because you're not supposed to touch them. You're not supposed to make food for them. You have but to have a separate bathroom. But it's all to make sure the men... Yes. Okay. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that it's all about the guys. Yes, but, because okay. the men are the, are the ones that, you know, have to be holy. Okay. Well, that's just... That's fantastic. 
Well, there's one more group that I found out. It's called Refocus. And it's actually, it stands for Recovering Former Cultist Support. It is an actual support group for former cult members. Nice. I didn't even know that existed. See? See? And what we're going to do is we will eventually post a link to that on our website when that actually gets up and running. And they pretty much define a cult as the same thing. Um, they were saying... That, God, there it, it goes again. If anybody out there, we don't know how to turn off whatever is notifying us because we literally went through everything that could notify us and unclicked everything so and we have it on privacy mode and all kinds of stuff that's because it's us that's why that's exactly why it's us. so as i was saying before that it says that also um an authoritarian pyramid structure with authority at the top yes you had uh, the leader the grand poobah then you had the elders. Under the elders were their wives. Um, everybody was subjected to having counselors. And I'm a woman, and I can't be counseled by anybody except for my husband. So you have two women counselors over you. Then it goes to the deacons and the deaconesses. And that's where a lot of the workload is distributed, whether you're working in the canning room, working in the press room, uh, then you have the common people who just basically, they haven't been there that long. Um, and it's a big ceremony at the end of each feast on who becomes a deacon or a deaconess. Oh, that's interesting. Yes. That is interesting. Okay. And look, there's one more that they say defines a cult, and that is isolation from society. Now, I know a lot of times when you think cult, you think like Waco and the big walls and everybody's contained. But they're saying that it's not necessarily a physical isolation, but it can be, it's a lot of times it's psychological. Oh, very much so, because you were encouraged to try and talk to your family members and friends and try and get them to convert. Now, what if they didn't? Is that like Scientology? You know how like, you're not allowed to talk to them? Exactly. You're okay. supposed to cut off anybody in your life who is not with you, because a house divided cannot stand. So if your mother didn't believe and didn't join, you weren't supposed to talk to her anymore. That's why a lot of people had no way to get out. I had a friend, she ran away from home um, at the age of 16 and her boyfriend's entire family went there and she went with them. She doesn't have a copy of her birth certificate. She's never had a driver's license, never had a job, never applied for a social security card, has five children. So what the hell does she and do? And she wanted out. She so wanted what out. What is she going to do? I there think. was really nothing she could do. She would cry because where are you going to go? Where are you going to so take you can't five do, kids? You can't do anything these days without a social security number. No. Nothing. She. I am happy to report I still talk to her. She's out. All her kids are grown. They're married. She's getting beautiful grandbabies. She has a driver's license, a social security right. card. Yeah, All baby. All right. She is ready to rock and roll. Yes. Now I forget what the original question was. <laughs> it was just, <laughs> no, it was just saying that cults, it's more um, psychological isolation than physical. Yes. You're supposed to give up everybody that doesn't believe. But then again, I was only there because I loved my ex and I still did talk to my mom. Okay. Uh, well, this goes perfectly into the first question that I had for you was, um, well, in the last episode, you were, we talked about up until the time you, you and your husband-to-be went to the feast. Yes. Went back home to your house. Yes. I, okay. He, he went to see if he wanted to get religion, and I went to see the Freaks in the Mudhole commune because, you know, reporting back to what your daughter thought about cults and Kool-Aid and stuff, I... Grew up when Jim Jones did what right. he I remember did, that, yeah. and I watched Waco burn, and I thought a cult was pretty much a closed, like you all lived there, and that's what I was going to look at, and that's not what this group was like. Okay, so so you guys get back to South Carolina. To South Carolina. What was the conversation like about, hey, should we join? Did you think about it, or was he more like, hey, I want to go, or are you coming with me? You mean when we went to the first feast? No, when you got back home. When Oh, when we got back home, we were you... already members. Okay, so... You... We got baptized, old, betrothed, married, the demons driven out of us, okay. the whole nine yards. So you knew you were going back? 
It, you have to show up three times a year okay. for their holy days. And like I said, we both work for ourselves. And even though it's a weird vacation, it would be a three times a year of vacation. Okay, well then talk me through from that feast, the very first one you went to, to the next feast. Were we were back? living there by then. Well, we when did you, so I guess, when did you move there? So you went back home after the first feast. Yes. How soon was it that you moved to? Um, my ex-husband had some bad habits and he invited a few friends over to see if he could resist. Well, <laughs> I opened <laughs> I opened the front door coming home from work, and it was like a cartoon, Laura. Like, three quarters of the way down the door frame, the smoke is just piling <laughs> out of it. Uh, my only thought was, oh, my God, Kenny's back. Thank you. Thank you. And I walked in the house, and I pretended to sound mad. What are you doing? You're not supposed to be doing that. And he looked at me, and he says, there's too much temptation here. I have to move and be with my people. And I was just like... And you thought he was back having a good time. Yes. And you were happy about that. Yes, okay. I, I did. I mean, we were both early, early 20s. I mean, back before it's you... It's all about having a good time. Yes. And I just, I thought he was back. And then when he said we had to move there to be with his people, it was just like crushing. I, I got just like, really? I, I set myself up for that kind of... <laughs> so then once he had that realization and you decided you were going with him... How long was it? There was no reason for me to stay there by myself. I had only lived in South Carolina for about a year and a half, not even two years. Okay, so no roots, no ties. Uh, you had the casual people you hang out with or you're friends with, but nobody... But I mean, this was the guy you were going to marry. Yes. Okay, so... Yeah, we had already made four payments on a house. Right, so of course and... you're going to go with him. Yeah, there was really no reason not to. I mean, I packed up from my home state and moved to South Carolina. Why the hell not? I didn't want to live and die where I was born. Right. New adventure! Yeehaw! Okay, so you guys pack everything up. Your that was within two weeks. Two weeks. Okay. And how old were you? I was 22 years old. Okay. Okay. So you get there with all of your belongings. Do you... I know you said they had trailers there. Did you get your own trailer or did you move in with relatives no, you had or what? No, we stayed with um, his sister and my brother-in-law for about three weeks until we found a house that we could rent that was about two or three blocks away from my in-laws. Now, what about the house that you guys had put a payment down on? Did you just uh, we, hell with that? we we lost it all. It okay. was just it was one of those, you know. You just okay. Well, sorry, you made four payments. See ya. Tough shit. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Okay. Well, it would have been the same as paying rent. It was sort of like That's a rent true. to That's own true. thing. Right. But okay. Okay. So you're at the cult. You are living with some of his relatives for only for about a couple of weeks until we found our own house to rent. Now, was that on the property or how far away from where the feasts were? How far away were you? It was probably about 15 miles from the actual um, cult property where they held the feasts. It was a very tiny town that only had about 600 people in it. Now, how many people in this town were in the cult? Only or, only my brother-in-law, sister-in-law, and my nephew. He was only five, I think, when we got there. Um, me and my ex-husband and my sister-in-law actually made a friend in that town. And her and her children started coming. But other than that, psh, that was that was it. Okay. This is, I'm just, this is just really weird for me to hear you say that you moved to be with the cult, but yet you live 15 miles away. Most people didn't live on the okay. property. Um, a, a couple of the maintenance guys who ran the heavy equipment, um, uh, the nurse, she lived there. She had her own own house there, and right next to the medical. Um, I, I don't. I don't really have a count. Maybe a total of, including kids, maybe there was fifty that lived on the actual property. Okay, but they brought bought up property around all around it because it's like a 50 acre place okay and they started buying up the land real cheap and people who didn't want to sell they kind of intimidate them and make life rough for them and then finally they just to get the hell away because okay. eventually if you're the only three acres i mean they bought up everything around them. yeah you don't want to stay 
No, you don't want right. to stay. Right, right. Okay. So, what was, once you moved in, you got your own house there, what was day-to-day -day life like? Day-to-day -day life was a lot different in the beginning. Women could still go outside the house and work. It was pretty much normal, except you kept two members. You didn't have outside friends and stuff. Now, by the time I left, the food restrictions were so bad that I had to own my own cow so that we could have milk. I had to make my own Bisquick mix, my own cake mix, my, my own everything because you couldn't buy a lot, a lot of store-bought stuff. I had to bake my own bread. I had to make my own butter. I And this was all, which I know we're going to do an episode all about the food restrictions. Yes. But this was just because of biblical things or they're always looking to make a buck okay. and that's what it started out as um it's biblical that you're not supposed to drink the blood of any animal and the epa you can look this up people the epa allows certain percentage per gallon or however they do it of blood and pus into the milk and it's acceptable to be sold to the public. Okay. Oh, and by the way, you're allowed to have 16 aphids per head of broccoli. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, okay, so somebody literally, <clears throat> you're allowed to have eight rat turds pour how many jars of peanut butter? And who decides this? The Food and Drug Administration. And somebody actually counts how many aphids are on broccoli or how many rat turds are on something? There's, it's somebody's job. And I think there's like rat turd. Problem. Okay, somebody out there grades potatoes that are rotted. Potato chips, those brown spots in them. They're rotted. That's potatoes. rot. And the, the potatoes that they use, they are allowed a, so much of a percentage of rot. But anyway, back to your question. Um, everyday life and milk and... Wait, that <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, go ahead. Um, it started out with the milk, and he... Okay, so he made sure everybody had their own cows. No, I was the only oh. one who had a cow. Oh, well, let's Other than it. Farmer Yosef, who had grown up on a dairy farm. How did you get so lucky? Um, my ex-husband made a lot, a lot, a lot of money, and... Money talks. Pretty much, and... Um, a lot of people had goats because they were much easier to handle and were cheaper. But I was the only one that, other than, like I said, Farmer Yosef, that had my own cow. Yes. Perfect. Okay. Now, it went from taking the milk away from us and making us buy it back to, okay, anything that has milk in it, you are not allowed to have. And by the way, there's lunch meat out there that's made with milk. Why the hell do you have to put milk in lunch meat? I, I, that one to this day gets me. I don't, I don't get it. I mean, you just use water, right? Um, they went to the eggs next, and that was one of the... Oh, this is one of my favorite stories. That, this is one of my favorite. That's where they went to the X-rated sermons, and... Wait, please tell me about the eggs and why they have cholesterol. I'm getting there. Okay. Um, the X-rated sermons, you can't really listen to, um... You're not supposed to listen to it in mixed company because they use all kinds of crap and stuff and shit and pussy and fucker in the ass and all <laughs> kinds of stuff, okay? And, and then, wait, 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 wait. But yet, this is a religious cult. Yes! That's what made it so funny. Me and my Perfect. friends... Perfect. Me and my friends would sit there and every time they'd say a dirty word or a phrase like dick, we'd write the word down and put slash marks next to it and go, oh my God, he said the word dick yeah, 14 so times in this sermon. So, so in, in the same breath, they could be talking about God and in the same sentence, fuck me in the ass. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, they took away the chicken eggs okay. next because Why? most chicken farms with eggs, the chicken is born and it's placed in a cage. Okay. It lives its entire life in that cage with food and water and laying eggs. Now, I have a feeling we're not going to the whole free range thing. No, free, just... free range is different. Okay. 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 Now, we have bad cholesterol in the eggs because the chickens are sexually frustrated. Because <laughs> everything on this planet was made to procreate. So these chickens are frustrated because they're not getting humped by the rooster. And that's, yeah, they're, yeah. So now they're selling us milk and eggs. So wait, wait, wait. So the eggs that they were selling you, 
these chickens were getting humped by the roosters, so they weren't sexually frustrated. Exactly. They, that's when they opened up the chicken farm there. Okay, and someone watched to make sure they were getting laid? I, I, I don't know. I, that was not my job. I was playground police. I'm sorry. Okay, okay. So any other... So you had the milk, you had the eggs, what Correct. else, what came next? It just, spir just, it just spiraled from there. Um, and a lot of us, we had, I, I make my own ranch dressing because you couldn't buy it. Um, it. It was just crazy on what you could and could not have. And they're selling it back to you. They, they have their own slaughterhouse now. Um, they have their own fish ponds that supposedly they harvest fish out of. And then sell it back to you for and, a shit ton of money. Oh, shit ton of money, yes. Oh, my God. So, And I also heard that he specifically goes to the auction house as well. His henchmen do. Okay. And they buy the cheapest, scrawniest, sickliest cows for the cheapest amount of money. And then they turn around and they're selling this as if it's like, you know, $20 a pound. What the hell? They do that with everything. Oh my God. I don't even know where to go after that. <laughs> so you said you and your husband, you both had your own business. Were you? Did you keep that while you were there, or how did that turn out? Uh, he was in construction and roofing, so he was able to get a job pretty fairly quickly. And me, I had my own roach coach, and I was selling five, $600 worth of food out of my truck, every day and they were building multi-million dollar neighborhoods in South Carolina which is where you left which is where I left yes and I would be sold out of food by 11 30 12 o'clock and have to go home because I my, my my truck couldn't carry any more food well that's what I had planned on doing when I moved to where I was moving to and there's no call for it there there's really mm. no no new construction right. there's not so I went to work at a Greasy Spoon. Yay, me. Okay, now was this Greasy Spoon, was that affiliated with the cult, or was this just no, some this random was, restaurant? No, this was just some random restaurant, and the only reason I got hired is because that was before I changed my name. After you change your name, which is a requirement, to the leader's last name. So everyone has the last name. Everyone has name. the same last name, okay. and they're very much disliked in the town that they're in because of... Just things that they do, and people know they're shady, and... Or people, they're just like, those are those freaky cult people. Pretty much. Okay. And you go in to put in an application someplace, they see that your name is the last name is the leaders, and they say, hmm, all right, well, um, Saturday you have to work. That's a, you know, that's a given. We Everybody works on Saturday. Well, you can't do that in the cult. You cannot work from Friday night sundown until Saturday night sundown. And that would keep you from getting hired at all these other businesses. So that was just like their legal way of saying no thank you. Yeah. All okay. they have to do is tell you you have to work on Saturday. And you can't work on Saturday, so you have to say, okay, thanks, bye. Okay. And there's no way that you could work on Saturday no. without the powers that be knowing, right? You could exactly. sneak out. No. Okay. No, no. No way. Oh, no. Two dear friends of mine, guys, they went to the legendary one-day sale at the mall and they got busted being there, and they got kicked out because they were buying things on the Sabbath. And yeah. Oh my God. Wow. So there's like people. Are there actually people that are out looking? Oh yeah, for they people? have people spying on. That's you. what I mean. It, yeah, just, so it depends spies. on who you are, on as to who's spying on you and watching what you're doing. Okay, so it's okay for the spies to work on the Sabbath. But not okay. They have loopholes for everything because okay. you're not allowed to spend money on the Sabbath. But yet they printed up their own money that you paid real money for. And then you get the paper money. And then they had like the, 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 the cafe open like after services where you could give the fake money to somebody who is technically not working. They're donating their time because you can't work right, on the Sabbath. Right, right, right. So okay. they're donating their time. In order for you to have this meal. So it has so nothing to do loopholes. with there's an exchange of, quote, money for goods or services. that They just get around just it. Get they, around it. Okay. they find ways around it to make the money. Now, after it got hard to find jobs, there were a couple of, there's two large companies there. One was a telemarketing company, and the other one was a very well-known large insurance company. 
some of the members had worked there for a really long time and they were now in management positions. So it was easy to get a job. You did not have to work on Saturdays. And here's the bonus. You had co-workers, co-workers that you could fucking talk to because you're not supposed to interact with the right. outside world. So now you've got a workplace that you're sitting in your cubby and, you know, there's a member behind you and you two can converse right. and, and, and block out 350 other people. Right. Except for when your supervisor is directly speaking to you about your job or something. I mean, you didn't have to be outright rude to people, but they kind of knew to leave us all alone. Right, right. Um, there was anywhere from 8 to 12 of us on a shift. So you always had somebody to talk to. Okay, so it's kind of like a nice break, in a way, in a way. Yeah, because if I, if there was no one there that was not a member, I'm not supposed to socialize with you. Okay. There's really not any way for them to figure out, okay, Laura, you are a member and you work in this office building. There's no way for them to spy on you. Right. You exactly. could have a friend at your office that maybe you can sit there and eat ham sandwiches with because she brings the ham and you miss having ham and you sit there and greedily eat the ham sandwich. And, yeah, I guess that did happen, didn't it? Oh, I have a feeling it did. I have a feeling it did. I had one friend and that I wasn't supposed to have and my ex-husband sent me um, to have something done on the car and she worked at the shop and me and her just, like, hit it off. And, uh, yeah, I'd be like, hey... You got any ham? ham? I'm bringing a car in today. Can can you make me a ham sandwich? <laughs> She's probably like, what the fuck? But I I was not good at following the rules. Well, I'm glad you weren't because that's why we have stories. Oh, <laughs> the stories I have. <laughs> so wait, now let's go. When did you have your first child? And that he was I born had, in the cult. I had him in '96. Okay. In, in the summer of '96. Okay, and you had been there how many years? I had been there since 93. Okay. okay. And me and my ex had already discussed, like I said, we had planned a life together. We decided that the world is a screwed up, fucked up place. We didn't want to bring kids into it. And if we ever decided that we wanted kids, we would adopt or foster older ones. Because we like to go camping and canoeing and... There's kids out there that need a home. Right, right. So how did that change? I stayed on birth control, and about after a year, year and a half, my ex was approached by a couple of the elders, and he was flat out asked if either one of us had a problem with making babies. And he said, no, she's on birth control. And he was told that we were breaking the law. So, okay, so... You're supposed to be fruitful and multiply. Well, yeah, right, when there were ten people on the earth. Right, sure. Not when the world was ever populated, but that's just, that's beside the point. Anyway, I so, lived in this tiny town. I did not want to go off the birth control, but the big town was like 30 miles away. And I right. had no way to get it. There's no pharmacy in this tiny town. He wouldn't let me go get it, so my birth control just got taken away. And so wait, what what did the cult have against adopting a baby? Even say even if it was an infant, we're not. That's... Oh gosh, because of the genes, it's all genetic. Oh, okay, but even look, you though, couldn't even go. Whoa. You could not even go into a resale shop and buy a used piece of clothing oh, for fuck's sake. Because you might be a child molester, oh, and that sake. DNA rubs okay. off on the clothing. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Wait, let's get back to DNA here. So you want to so. You had to have your own child because of the DNA. Yes. But you had that same DNA before you joined the fucking cult. Yes. So your DNA changed? I don't have the answers for that one. I just know we have to be fruitful and multiply. multiply. Okay. So I have my first son. Yay me. Life is going good. And then suddenly life is not going good. And I'm starting to think these people are nuts. And... I mean, real nuts, because by then I had been there for a few years, and I know what went on behind the scenes. And a lot of it wasn't right. So I started making plans, as any woman does, months, even a year in advance, of leaving. You have to have money, you have to have a plan, the whole nine yards. And I laughed at what my one friend who told us that she had just found out she's pregnant. 
because her children were already in the double digits and she mm -hmm. wasn't supposed to be having another baby. Surprise. I laughed at her and two weeks later I found out I was pregnant with my second son. Don't laugh at people. Yeah. And see, we had been taking precautions again and he got approached again and said that we were breaking the law. Because... So you're supposed to just have like one after another, pretty much. Pretty much, okay. But that also keeps the woman there. She's not free to break away. Oh, gotcha. Do you know how hard it is to leave that place? No job, no credentials. Kids. Kids. Where are you going to end up? Gotcha, right. And um, anyway, yeah, he got approached again. And again, he was asked if there was a problem why I hadn't had another kid. And he says, well, we did what we were supposed to. And here's their logic. One man plus one woman plus one child equals three. There's no multiplication involved, okay? So now, if you have two parents and two children, that equals four. That's the multiplication. Get it? You have to how multiply. About, how, about, how about three times one is three? I don't know. I'm just, I'm just playing devil's advocate. I'm like, there's multiplication, right? It, it is, it is. Okay, but that, that didn't work? No. The three, the three times tables didn't work? No, but that's how I ended up with my second son. Oh, my God. I love them both. I wouldn't oh, trade no. them for Oh, I know you do. I know you do. That's just so bizarre. The reason, I mean, the reasoning behind having children. What I mean, it shouldn't be that ridiculous. Well, they give you ridiculousness, but the real reason is, is because... When the boys grow up, they're free labor. Mm, and okay. when the girls get to be 13, they're, oh my God, pawning over them. Uh, child so they're brides. ready to get married. They, they start marrying them off at 13, yes. Oh, fuck. To probably a lot older guys. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I, I met a little boy there. He was four when I met him. To this day, I'm still friends with him. Um, it was way more relaxed when we first started when we were there and met these two, him and his little friend decided they were going to get married. And they didn't separate the men and the women up until 2003 at some point. Because they, uh, they separated them completely when I left. Um, holy shit, I know. Somebody else got out. One, I found out the other day one of the elder's wives that I never thought would leave has left. And I was like, no, Whoa. shit. Do you know why? I'm not sure. We'll get into that at another time. Okay. Um, but my friend left when he realized that the girl that he loved and wanted to be married to was given to an almost 80-year-old man. Jesus Christ. And he looked around and realized that the young boys that were there, they were nothing more than slave labor. And they were all promised wives, but... But it sounds like all the wives went to the old people. They did. They, like all the girls, regardless of how old or young, he told, went to the elders. Well, he told me the women that the older men didn't want, whether somebody got there with a, a, a daughter that had Down syndrome. That's gotcha. who they would give to a teenage guy. I mean... So there was absolutely no picking your own spouse. Or was there? It, in the beginning, there was. Okay. Um, and then it got to be a, a, like, I hate to say it, but this weird dating database. Because they kept, you filled out, if you wanted to be married, man or woman, you filled out a profile paper, a picture of you was attached to it, and it submitted. That way, if you live out of town, it, you might find a wife, or if a wife's looking for a husband... You know, you flip through these books. I never had to do that because I, like I said, got there with right. Penny, so. But. So it's like a dating service, kind of. It ended up being at one point, and I don't know how they do it now. I, my one friend, her daughter was beautiful, and she was four years old, and men were coming up trying to be the one to be with her. I'll Wait, four years old? Four years old? At four years old, they wanted to put a down payment Jesus on her Christ. for when she turned 13. She was one of those little girls oh, that you just look at and go, God. oh my God, she should be a child model. Do you know what I mean? Just the beautiful blue eyes, 
the curly brown hair. But yet they're hair. having disgusting thoughts and like sexual thoughts about her. I'm assuming so. And it was her stepdad who would deal with these people because he's the head over both the mother and his stepdaughter. Okay. And it is up to $6,500 the last time I knew of for the bride's price. Holy shit. So this little girl had like a price on her head. At four years old, yeah, six thousand five hundred dollars was the top bidder. And at who that gets point. the money, the family or the church? Back then, it used to go to the father for the bride's price. That's why it was called the bride's price. And then the leader came out and proclaimed that it was being done all wrong mm, because okay. the leader is the head over all of us. So let me guess, the supreme the leader, head. The leader should get the money. Yes, I. Gotcha. I know of one guy to this day. He's probably still paying her off. Because it was a 16-year-old virgin, and he paid $25,000 Oh, for my her. God. Yep. And he still, oh, my, I don't even know where to go with that. I don't even know where to go with that. And do the, I'm assuming the women know this, and they just can't do anything about it, or is this all done hush-hush? It just all depends. I mean, there's some people that were born there. They have no idea of anything different. But, I mean, do they know that as they get older, there's a price on their head, basically? I don't know. I never thought about it. I don't have girls. I never asked oh, anybody. Okay. Um, that makes sense. I, I'm still friends with and talk to a lot of people that used to be there. I'll have to ask quite a few of them who had girls. Okay, because I'm just curious if that was kind of like a hush hush thing that was just like you know like word of mouth or was it? Well, it's just like a dowry. Or... Like okay. you, different customs do different things when you get married, and it was in the Old Testament. It's called the bride's price and. I don't know. I think it was two goats and a donkey. I don't. I don't remember. <laughs> I really don't. <coughs> what the actual scripture says, um, but yeah, it's it's not worth much. Oh so. my god! So the women basically, in their eyes, are worth nothing. Women are property. Women are property. Women okay. are nothing but property there. Okay, so. Well, I then, actually think my ex would have fought me tooth and nail much harder. If I would have had two girls instead of two right, boys. Right, because the two boys were just labor. And the two really boys were just labor and eventually might wander off because they're not being treated well. And that's really no big deal because and there's the, no money. And the two girls would be fodder for the next generation gotcha. of pedophiles out there. Gotcha. Oh, and pedophiles will be a whole different episode. Well, they do a lot of prison ministry shit, especially with their elder who's a pedophile doing 30 years in jail right now. Nice. He, he runs his own ministry out of the, the prison he's in, and a lot of these prisons have their own ministries. Okay. These cons get out. They have nowhere else to go. Nobody in their family wants them right. for whatever they did. They have nowhere to go back to, and so they're told, well, hey, go out to this group. You know, We'll give you a place to... A roof over your head will, you know. Oh, so you have a lot of ex-cons coming yes. into the cult. Yes. And a lot of That was a dirty little oh, secret for a very long damn. time that's really kept on the hush-hush. I got you. So a lot of these ex-cons were in jail because they were pedophiles. Or I'm not claiming they're all pedophiles. I'm saying I'm some of say. them. Some of them. Yes. So then here comes a pedophile into the cult. Which we have no idea. I only found right, out. Right. I found out there were actually four of them. One of my friends was like, did you know? I said, I knew so-and-so was. And she's like, well, so was this one, this one, and this one. And this one molested his own daughter, and he was an elder. Do you remember the sermon that it was Helen Brimstone about, you know, touching this and that? Right. And she said it was his own conscience coming out from what molesting his daughter. Hell? So, is this about the time you decided you needed to leave, or how did that come up? When I know you said it was it was a process. It was very very much a process, and I I really wanted us to leave as a family. I, okay. I had two little boys. It's the love of my life. Okay, this religion shit just ain't working out. Can we go? Right. And at one, I, I spent the last two years begging, pleading doing research this that and the other thing anyway we're in an argument and I said something about him you know loving the leader more than than me and his family and being more loyal to him and he looked at me with this dead pan stare in his eyes dead serious and said 
If the leader called him into his office and gave him a shoelace and a pair of scissors and told him he needed him to become a eunuch, he would have no problem dropping his drawers, tying that shoelace around his dick, and snipping it off. Are you kidding? What the hell? At, at that point, I realized you I was fighting out. a losing battle. Right. right. That he probably would never leave. So that's when I started making my plans to try and get out. And... I ended up finding out that he was cheating on me because he worked nine hours away in a different town, only came home once a month. And then I found out that he was taking a second wife, which he tried very, very hard to try and keep from me. Okay. But, but I it found was completely, out. quote, legal in the cult. Probably even. Yes. They wanted him to, probably. Probably because they knew I had been for years bucking the system and being a problem. And. He was in his mid to later 40s, and they're giving him a, a woman who's more than, less than half his age. And Do you know what the price was for her? I have no idea. I just, I, I, my heart was broken. You know. I can't even imagine that this is the person you love, the father of your children. And they're replacing you. And they're replacing you. Well, if they don't replace you, they have more love to give. Oh, yeah. They have yeah, enough yeah. love to go around. Mm -hmm. I got, yeah, right. What the crock of shit. And, like I always say, things changed. When we first got there, we had the same bedroom, the same house, the same everything. Slowly over the years, the man and the woman each had to have their own bedroom. Then it became that each woman had to have her own house. After that, it was decided that the man, before he ever marries, has to have his own house. When he does marry a woman, he is to give her her own dwelling. That way, the man can have as many wives as he wants, and, and, and none of them really know about each other. Because you're not allowed to go over to his house unannounced. You're... I, so he would basically go to your house? Uh, yeah, he could go okay. and spend time with whatever wife he wanted, and that's supposed to keep the jealousy at bay, because I don't know if he's with you, I don't know if he's with right. Marie. So, so basically, if he came to your house, yay, good night for you. Yes. But if he doesn't show up, uh, it, it's none of your business where he is. It's none of my business okay. where he is. And, and I can allow my mind to think, oh, he's at his own own dwelling. Right, I got you. I got you. Not at wife number threes or whatever. Exactly. And now, you may not even know that he has another okay. wife. How does he afford all of this? That's why a lot of the men, they... I, I mean, I, I, mean I, I knew a woman who lived in a in the back of a pickup RV camper. It was the kind you but, sat in the back of a bed of a pickup truck. But that's the house he gave her? That's what he gave her what to live fuck? in. Oh, so so, so in a cow not, field. So we're not talking houses. Like when you hear house, I think of maybe like a small ranch house no. or something. You're talking about basically shelter, like a cardboard you could, box. You could give your wife a tent, and that counts. And that counts. And you could nice. give and you can give her um, a pound of beans and a pound of rice a week to live on. And she what? has and she has to have. Two sets of shoes, two sets of socks, two sets of underwear, two sets of bras, and two dresses. That way she can be clothed while she's washing the other set. These oh are the basic my God. these are the basic necessities that your husband that's the barest minimum. Okay. And I've actually seen men be really mean to their wives to try and punish them. And give them here, here's your one pound bag of beans and here's your one pound bag of rice. What the hell? No, I'm sure the house he's living in is not a tent. Probably not. You know, I'm quite sure that's a fairly nice house. And I'm sure he's eating more than beans and rice. Well, like I said, women are nothing but property, and there were a lot of really weird punishments out there. I had a friend who only had access to four spoons, four forks, four knives, and four plates, and four glasses because her husband was tired of her not doing the dishes and just leaving everything in the sink. So he restricted her to one of everything for each family member, and he wants his three meals. So those dishes are washed and ready for lunch. Oh, those dishes now, are washed and ready for dinner. Did she have, was she able to, to just go out and buy more? No. Because he nope. was the ruler of the yep. house. Okay. So and she didn't work. Those two lived oh, out in the okay. actual compound property, 
and he was pretty much the heavy equipment operator, security dude. Okay, now say she did work, and he said you're only having four of each. Say she had a job with an income, even if it was a small income, could she go out and get her own forks and spoons and be like, fuck you? No. Because nope. he was the ruler of yep. the house. Okay. Uh, most women, I, I was an exception, but most women, you had to be so submissive down to, can I go to the grocery store? Here's the list. Can I buy these things? Wow. And I had a friend that would have to ask to go to the fucking bathroom. Are you kidding me? No. No. I, when she, and what if he says no? Uh, he was often, he often said no. I would take a shit on his feet. He often said no just to make her uncomfortable. Oh, what a motherfucker. He was a motherfucker. Oh, my God. He was a motherfucker to the fact that I think he gave her seven children before she was 30. Oh, my God. Is she? Do you know if she's still there? Oh, she's a very dear friend of mine. Oh, I saw thank her. God she's out? Uh, she's been out, Oh, yes. thank God. Yes, yes. She actually went on uh, the Dr. Phil show at one point. Oh, get out. Yes, yeah, she did. Oh, that's nice. I am so glad that... Oh, my God. I Like I said, I cheer every time somebody gets out. I don't blame you. I do not blame you. As I was saying, I'm always so happy when I hear that somebody has gotten out of that place. And that's why we are doing what we're doing to get the word out that if whatever situation you're in, we'd like to be able to give you some resources to get the hell out. Um, we're working on a website that's going to list all kinds of different resources. Um, I even have a moving company that is interested in being listed, that if you need moved out of a bad situation, they will show up when your partner is not there. That is fantastic, because a lot of times that's a huge deal. Yes. Like how, like I want to get out, how the hell do I do it? Exactly, okay. especially if your partner controls every penny. How right. do you save money for a moving truck? Right. Um, anyway, that's hopefully going to be up on the website soon. Laura has all of the other information with the Twitter and the Instagram accounts. I would love to give a shout out this week to my personal assistant, Marie, who I end up assisting more than she ends up assisting me, but we have a hell of a good time. And I'd also like to give a shout out again to Tabrina, who we are meeting with this weekend. She is going to help us with all of our technical problems, which as you guys can listen and tell, we really need. So she is going to help us out with that. And then I also want to give a shout out and a huge thank you to my brother Paul and also Christopher Horn, who is a great, um, like he designs artwork and he is the one that helped us to resize our artwork so we could submit to iTunes because my God, that was the biggest pain in my ass. <laughs> but he finally got it resized. We are shipped off to iTunes. We are awaiting approval and hopefully by the next time we record, we will be up and running on iTunes. All right. Yes, so that is our hope. Um, in future, we would like to get to know you guys, and maybe you can give us some questions or ask me to expound on something that I might have said on the show or on an earlier show that you might be really interested in. And we also want to do episodes with viewer, or viewer, Jesus Christ, ah! <laughs> with listener questions. So um, you can either email them at I got the hell out at Gmail. Or on the Facebook group, which is also I Got the Hell Out. And that's a closed group, but... you know, We'll let you in. We'll let you in. So any kind of questions you have whatsoever, we would love to start doing maybe once a month an episode that's just listener questions. Well, we could do that, or maybe we could just do a listener question or two at the end of every podcast. Oh, that would be good, too. And um, most of the people said that they would prefer an hour long as opposed to a half an hour. That's why we went a little over today, guys. And you don't have a problem rambling. Let's be I, I don't. I really don't. <laughs> I, uh, my real dad used to call me Motormouth when I was little. That was that was his nickname for me. But for a podcast, that's good. <sighs> Motormouth. Oh, that's good. So, well, until the next time that we record, if you're in any kind of situation where you don't want to be for whatever reason. Especially if you will feel unsafe. Yes, exactly. What do you need to do, Debbie? You need to get the hell out. See you guys. Bye.